Hey guys, and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all of the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is John Campia. Well, greetings and the most heartfelt salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. And on this shot, Ashley, you look like you've been sanctified you look like, like the do? way the way the Why? glasses behind your head <laughs> yeah. in your really? shot it just looks like yeah that's how i always look Perfect. also here is john schnapp they got a stained glass christmas view going on here what's up everybody it's monday also here david griffin this is a, this is another monday show it's the big boy show yeah. prime time monday yeah. night coming monday up from the minor leagues <laughs> yeah. you ready for this i'm ready you, let's you ready do it for we're this? live we are live all right you got your bill's head on you're ready bills to are go. winning we're five and four right now you beat the jets right we did beat the jets yeah, very nice all right let's get started <laughs> well it is monday which means it's time for our weekend box office report brought to you by our friends at amc theaters holding on to the number one spot for the second week in a row is the latest james bond film specter which took in 35.4 million bringing Bringing its two-week total up to over 543 million worldwide. Also holding on to the number two spot for the second week in a row is the animated The Peanuts movie, taking in 24.2 million for a two-week worldwide total of over 90 million. And third spot is the new Christmas film Love the Coopers, which brought in just 8.4 million on its opening weekend. Coming in fourth is The Martian. The Martian dropped from third last week, making just over 6.7 million to bring its worldwide total up to 470 million. $78 million. Rounding out the top five is the new film, The 33, which just managed to make over $5.8 million on its opening weekend. John, what stands out to you about this week's box office report? Um, well, first of all, I was a little bit late uh, because of traveling and whatnot to the Peanuts movie party. So having finally, so I, I didn't watch in time for, for last week. Having seen the Peanuts movie uh, thing since then, I had Adore that movie. I'm so glad it's still hanging on to second place. I just, I, my heart smiled from start to finish mm -hmm. in that movie. I was so happy watching it. It was just great. So the other thing though, this is the one that stands out to me the biggest, was that Love the Coopers came in third at 8.4 or something like that. I, I'll be honest with you. I was expecting Gem and the Holograms numbers mm. from it. Now I probably should have known better because it is Christmas season and it is an impressive cast list. There's a lot of people in yeah. this cast that have a lot of different fans, so I probably should know, but honestly, I was expecting like waking up today and finding in our box office report $1.2 million, because right. first of all, it looks horrendous. Second, <laughs> it's had almost no marketing. And third, everybody that I know see, because I did not subject myself to watching it, but all the guys in our crew who have seen it talk about how terrible it is. So I was really expecting it to come in low. Very impressed by that it got 8 points. I'm sure the studio's not thrilled with 8 points something, but I thought it was going to be much worse. Anyway, Shep, what stands out to you about the box office? But love the Cooper. is like Christian called it garbage. Garbage, That's what garbage. in his New York uh, accent. Yeah, that's the one that shocks me. I mean, I haven't seen the film. I was looking forward to seeing the film. Every critic that I've talked to or read about said it's uh, garbage. But uh, it's obviously the, the cast in it and it just kind of dropping in where people want to see a Christmas movie right now. Perfect timing. I mean, eight million for a film like that, like with yeah. zero, almost a zero rating is like, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, Peanuts Inspector, nothing surprising that those stuck around. I mean, I saw Peanuts last week with a, a you know, a, like 300 children screaming, Charlie Brown, and stuff. It was very... I'm surprised they even knew who he was. I was uh, you know, hey, look, kids love Charlie Brown. I, I, still, I still love Charlie Brown. I thought there was a few too many Red Baron sequences just for me as an adult, but right. I appreciated it for what they were doing for the kids and the family, so... David, what stands out to you about the? Box I'm really impressed with the Martian still holding strong. We we're talking about yes. earlier; it's right. in its seventh week right now. It's still holding strong. It was a, I thought it was one of my favorite movies of the year so far. I love the book. Read the book just before I saw the the film. I thought both did a great job. Uh, Spectre, of course, has to do well. It's not a surprise, but it has to do well. I think I read somewhere that it needs to make 650 million worldwide just to break even. <laughs> 650. Really? Even, though the movie, even though the budget was 250, it needs more than double because of advertising. So it needs 650 yeah. just to break even. So this has to be a juggernaut throughout this, uh, well, I guess into the holidays. It's off right to a good now. start. Already cracking the 500 million mark in week two. Yeah. It's probably going to cross and I, that and mark. And I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the talking about Spectre and the Martian. I enjoyed both. I'm also very excited to see Peanuts because I was talking to Dennis before this and he said, you know, he asked me like if I've ever seen the Peanuts movie and I hadn't. And he said, it's good. You should check it out. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. Now, I don't know about the Coopers. It said it's garbage. Mm. So I might stay away from that one. <laughs> I'm definitely going to go see the Peanuts movie. 
All right, what's next? As many of you will remember, back in April, reports began circulating that actor Ryan Gosling was in negotiations to take on a lead role in director Ridley Scott's upcoming Blade Runner sequel. Now, in an exclusive interview with Collider.com, Gosling has confirmed that he will indeed be in the new follow-up to the sci-fi classic. Gosling will next be seen in the new film, The Big Short. Schnapp, does the addition of Ryan Gosling increase, decrease, or do nothing for your level of anticipation for the new Blade Runner movie? I mean, I think I, it increases it slightly. I'm one in the, the mindset that I don't need a Blade Runner sequel. It's one of my favorite science fiction films. Does it need a sequel? No. That they're making one, I'm, I am excited about because I'll be like, man, it, it'll be 2040. What do the replicants look like or whatever? <laughs> uh, Ryan Gosling's a great actor. Uh, they've got, uh, how, I don't know how you say his name, Villeneuve and uh, is directing it. Uh, the, uh, and uh, Deacons is uh, the cinematographer. Uh, Prisoners was uh, Villeneuve's like you know crushing of the human Which spirit. Which Deacons also was a cinematographer. Yeah, on. so I mean those two guys, uh, I think they're going to bring something really unique and and uh, and fulfill the prophecy that Ridley Scott started with Blade Runner <laughs> Two: The Quickening or whatever it's going to be called. <laughs> How to kill any enthusiasm for that movie right now? <laughs> Name it: Blade Runner Two: The Quickening. I know. Um, I look. I am one of those very, very, very rare human beings in the world that I actually don't like the original Blade Runner. We're gonna watch it together. Which version? Gonna... There's like four. I, I, I know. Well, I, just the last time I saw it was probably ten years ago. Right. It was the last time I watched it, and I've I seen it like two or three times, and I've just never enjoyed. It. Now that being said, I have not been interested at all in this sequel. Not because I didn't really like the first one, uh, what, but even though I didn't like it, I acknowledge like. Everybody else loves it. So I got to take that in consideration. The reason I haven't been excited for it is because Ridley Scott forgot how to direct about 12 years ago. Right. You know, everything he's put out has been terrible. So I had lost faith in Ridley Scott until this little movie called The Martian came out. And now The Martian is, is I'm going to call it my number two favorite movie of the year right now. Um, I and depending on the day you ask me, some days it might be number one. It jumps back and forth with um, Inside Out for me. That's what is my favorite movie of the year so far. But he killed it. It yes, it's based on a great book. But if you watch that film, the direction of the film is what gave it its oomph. Mm. You know, it was all about timing and the artistry of that movie that a director like Ridley Scott should be bringing us. Now all of a sudden, we're talking Blade Runner two, and I'm like. Yeah, sign me up for that. And adding a talent like Ryan Gosling, like we said this before when it was first rumored that he might pop in. The, Gosling's a great actor. He just He's a flat-out great actor. Adding him to something like this, having him act alongside Harrison Ford, I think will be a good thing. So, you know, in just a couple of months, I've gone from who cares about Blade Runner 2 to I care about Blade Runner 2. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it. David, what about you? For me, Ryan Gosling doesn't sell me on the movie, even though I'm excited to see it. It's because of Deacons and Villeneuve, or how you say his name, because I saw Sicario. Sicario is one of my oh top my three God, films yeah, of the yeah, year. Sicario's just heavy. gorgeous. I mean, this Blade Runner 2, if anything, let's say the story doesn't work, it's going to look good. So yeah, that's it's, it's going to look good. So I'm excited to see that. I just, I just love the, the world of Blade Runner. He played the PC game when I was a kid. Just everything about it. Uh, it's just such a. I mean, it was Los Angeles. Was it 2013? 2019. 19. Son. 19. 19. 19. So we're almost there. So there's a chance yeah. that it could still look like that. We yeah. could still get some artificial <laughs> intelligence coming. And just the whole. Um, I love the system they use to find out if somebody's human or a robot. You know, that whole the question, the, the Q and A, the void the comp. Yeah. Comp. I mean, there's so many iconic moments. Uh, it came out a year after I was born. I, that, that's a fantastic film for me. I love that. A youngling is in the audience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, folks, we've reached that part of the show now for Buy or Sell. Here's how this works. In front of her ass, she's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. And those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or assault. So Ashley, what do we got? According to a report in The Wrap, reigning Academy Award winning actress Patricia Arquette has joined the voice cast of the upcoming Pixar film Toy Story 4. Arquette will be playing a new character in the fourth installment of the franchise that is set to be a romantic comedy of sorts that revolves around the relationship between Buzz and Bo Peep. David, buy or sell the addition of Patricia Arquette to the voice cast of Toy Story 4. I always buy Patricia Arquette. She's fantastic. She's great in Boyhood. She's in the uh, oh, yeah. TV series. She's in Boy, uh, uh, Boardwalk Empire, one of the last seasons of that. She's always good in that, whatever she's in. I don't, I don't think we necessarily need a, a Toy Story 4, even though I'm excited for it. I remember after Toy Story 3 came out, which I thought had the perfect ending. I thought that was a great oh, conclusion yeah. to the series. They didn't need yeah. to make another one. John Lasseter said they wouldn't make a fourth unless they had a story to tell. So they must have a good story to tell. I hope that's true. But, of course, I buy Patricia Arquette. 
Yeah, getting, look, we always say this is the mantra, adding talent is never a bad move. And when you get the reigning defending, uh, you know, Academy Award ho holder mm -hmm. at that, that's great. Uh, I would have loved to have heard what character she's playing. I mean, we're still so far away from it. We, there's still right. so much we don't know. The notion about it's going to be a bit of that they're taking a romantic comedy slant on it, I think is fascinating. And you're right. Toy Story 3 was, aside from Return of the Jedi, I mean, is one of the most perfect endings to a franchise ever. I mean, it was just a perfect ending. That being said, when they started putting out, remember they put out a couple shorts even yeah. after Toy Story 3? It was very obvious the hunger for Toy Story was still there, both on Pixar side and the audience. Because we lost, we all lost our minds as soon as they put out new shorts. Everybody was watching them, so clearly that was there. I want to visit these toys again. I want to, I want to keep visiting these toys till I have kids that I can watch them with. I mean, I, it's just that special to me. They're three for three. Um, there's, you can make an argument that the Toy Story trilogy is amongst, I, I'll put in the top three best trilogies ever made. Mm -hmm. I mean, look look at all three of them. They're just, they're impeccable. So the fact that they're fourth is great and Patricia Arquette's addition I think is a good move. I can't wait to see some other names come back around. Anyway, Schnapp, what about you? Well, I'm irritated because it ruins my Toy Story box set edition, the tin. Oh, yeah. The, which I never bought. The perfect ha -ha. <laughs> You didn't sucker me in because I knew they were going to do a Toy Story 4. I was like, they're not, they're not going to end this. I was like, nah, this is it, dude. Here's a, the, the the tin foil box, whatever, you know, with all the extra goodies, all three of them. I was like, nope, they're going to do another one. They started with those little shorts. Look, they're doing Planes 8 or whatever, Cars 4 or 5. Or the, they're not messing around with Toy Story, the one of the best things they have yeah. besides The Incredibles. So I'm 100% I'm into seeing Toy Story 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Luke Skywalker's in there, 12. You know, get everybody <laughs> yeah, should be they, in they there. They have the rights to Marvel and Star Wars. Bring all, the Star yeah. Wars Bring those original <laughs> Kenner great. action figures. <laughs> Boba Fett's rocket thing doesn't fire, whatever. <laughs> I love Patricia Arquette, so I fully buy her being a voice. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, is, isn't she going to play Bo Peep? Or who played Bo Peep? No, the there, there's, I think Annie Potts, I believe, was the voice of Bo okay. Peep in the original. Um, they just said she's in an undisclosed role right now. So maybe she takes over the Bo Peep role, or maybe it's a... It's love a, trying. Maybe there's another Whoa. cowgirl or something right. that's vying for her his love. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, what's next? The highly anticipated Warner Brothers DC film Batman vs. Superman is now just over three months away, and the first official t-shirt merchandise has hit the web. The new shirts, which you can see here, are available to be ordered, and you can find a link to the product page in the video description below. Fearing the actions of a godlike superhero left unchecked, Gotham City's own formidable forceful vigilante takes on Metropolis's most revered modern-day savior, while the world wrestles with what sort of hero it really needs. And with Batman and Superman at war with one another, a new threat quickly arises, putting mankind in greater danger than it's ever known before. John Byers sell these first official Batman vs. Superman t-shirts. Bye, 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 bye. When the first t-shirts were coming out, I was expecting just the official logo or I was expecting just like uh, a, you know some crappy Walmart looking Superman on, on right. the front of it stuff like that these are great these I especially love the Batman oh, one yeah. the, the demon of Gotham yeah. or whatever it is I just think these are fantastic I mean and these are probably I'm now expecting we're gonna see these actual shirts in the movie. I think these are going to they represent, you know, what the public opinion is of these guys on different sides. I'm sure some think Batman is a hero, some think Superman is a savior, and then there're going to be others who think it's the exact opposite. It feels raw, they feel visceral. Now the other two, you know, The Guardian of Gotham, The Last Son of Krypton, and and the official those are great too. I would wear those shirts. That's great, but I was expecting something so generic and so flat. Right. When the first shirts came out, seeing these just gets me excited. I'm stoked. I cannot wait to own these shirts. So for me, it's a big buy. David, what about you? I buy it because usually when you see actors that are on T-shirts, it always looks so pristine. Or right. in, in the posters, like they've actually like you know red eyes for Henry Cavill and put horns on them, and mm -hmm. you know gave uh, Ben Affleck this uh, you know obviously skeletal structure you can see you know underneath his skin. It just looks fantastic. It's creepy. I don't usually need to wear the T-shirt that I'm you know where I'm going to go see a movie, but if I go to a premiere, I want to rock one of these <laughs> two T-shirts. Yeah. But I think for me, I'm going to do the False God one, the Son oh, of yeah. That looks fantastic. I think that uh, Batman Gotham, the last son of Krypton, is going to be an article maybe Lois Lane might write. Oh, oh right. yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't even think of that. Yeah. Like right out of the movie. Yeah. That's a really good thing. I like it. 
I love the Batman Gotham, you know, demon one. That's I'm going to be rocking that T-shirt very soon, <laughs> as soon as possible. I think all the T-shirts are really cool, but that one specifically is graphically striking to me. I think that's a great a great move for them to really like push the boundaries and not go like what we thought, just a four color, very simple. Like there's Batman, there's Superman. I think they're like going within the story structure of how they're presenting the Batman v Superman. So I like it. I buy it. All right, what's next? Speaking of the aforementioned Ridley Scott, another project the director has in the works is a follow-up to his film Prometheus. The director recently said the title of that new film would be Alien Paradise Lost. However, while speaking at the AFI Film Festival, it looks like they change it up a bit. While talking about his current film The Martian, Scott said the following, I was going to be doing what will be called Alien Covenant, which starts shooting in next February, and we were struggling then with the screenplay there. And then there was a phone call somebody saying listen we've got this thing which is completely written called Martian and I said huh and I sped read it in an hour and by mid-afternoon I talked to Fox Schnett buyer saw the change of title to Alien Covenant yeah I buy it I mean I, I liked Prometheus I like the title Prometheus I like the title Paradise Lost I like the title Prometheus Paradise Lost then I liked Alien Paradise Lost <laughs> and now I'm still like an Alien Covenant and you know I mean this was like Scott, like just elbow facing, you know, just right in Bloom Camp, uh, just pushed him <laughs> out, son. It was like, mm. he was like, look, it was flexing. He was like, he's got oh, that what? clout. Yeah, he yeah. clouded it up. He, <laughs> he was like, homed oh, his, uh, man. Bloom Camp's yeah. around. Side <laughs> kick, front kick, back kick, floor, you know? I feel bad for Bloom Camp because honestly, all those, uh, I'm talking about Bloom Camp for a minute. I know it's about Alien Covenant, but this. This is like the Alien 5, everyone's like, oh, you know, Reese is alive and all this. Other. It wasn't Reese, what was his name? That, that's Terminator. But it was like Kyle Reese. Uh, oh, um, uh, Hicks. 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 Yeah, Hicks. there we go. Sorry. Michael Bane's character. Terminator, yeah. it's all getting blended together. Terminator Alien should be a brand new franchise. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Alien 5, I was looking forward to that. That would have been cool. It would have been a what if, like if Alien 3 and 4 didn't happen. And then that was announced at the same time as in uh, Scott was like, well, wait, I'm still doing my Prometheus stuff. And they were like, well, we can all work together. I think Scott was like, you know, flexing. He was like, no, I'm doing Alien. That's why it's called Alien now. And this other one's going to have to hit it because I'm doing like five sequels. Remember, he said, I'm going to do yeah. like five or six sequels. I'm going to really get into it. Hey, look, you, you should mention what you were reading about uh, the Alien so, Covenant. So, yeah, this press release from Fox is interesting. One, this is the second movie that's named after the ship. Covenant is going to be a colony ship going to this far edge of the galaxy or whatever and sort of on this planet Michael Fassbender is the only David his character the, is the only character uh, only inhabitant of the planet that they assume is this paradise hence the previous title Paradise Lost mm -hmm. so there's no Numi where's Numi Rapace she's not there anymore so I mean you wonder like is she going to be like flashbacks is she going to show up at some point I love Numi Rapace I think she's fantastic I thought she was a great Sigourney Weaver like female like she has that strength about her mm -hmm. you know right. she has that that look i mean she's just i thought she was a perfect uh person to be the lead of this franchise but it looks like she's not around anymore yeah it's interesting or just we, a, like a diversion yeah we don't want to read too much into these like one paragraph synopses or anything like that because we had heard that numi had signed up right. and she was going to be in it and all that kind of stuff so uh, let's not read too much into it but you're right it's fat it is strange the way that it's worded. So I guess we're just gonna have to sit back and wait till we hear a little bit more about it. I buy this move because I I wasn't really big on Alien Paradise Lost. It, it, for whatever reason for me, that never really worked. This works a little bit better. Now, I was not a fan of the original Prometheus movie. That's just me. But it is. It, this does reaffirm, now that Fox has confirmed that this is the title of the film, Alien Covenant, it is kind of interesting seeing the about face and philosophy. Because remember when when really Scott did Prometheus, he really went out of his way and all of his interviews and everything saying, look, this, it's in the same world as the anything, but this is not alien. This is a new movie. And now I think he realized that didn't work. Now it's like, F it, put alien in the title. Right. It's, it's not just Prometheus 2. It's not Prometheus Paradise. It's not Prometheus Covenant. It's alien covenant, right. uh, which I think ultimately is the right move. I think this is the way they need to go about it. So yeah, at the end of the day, for me, it's a buy. I also think I was going to say, I think later, maybe future Blu-ray releases, we're going to see an alien colon Prometheus. Alien. Uh, I, I think they're gonna, they might change the name later on down the road. Be like, oh, yeah. it's part of this whole trilogy. You're right. We have here I mean, now. that's a smart thing. And I also think Nomi's going to be in it. I'm just like, just thinking about it. They might even have a pre-credits sequence mm -hmm. where they where they land and some something yeah. goes down. And yeah. Then yeah. cut right. to three thousand years later. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, one David way or another, she could survive. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. all right, what's next? 
According to a story in The Hollywood Reporter, comedian Tracy Morgan will continue his comeback in the upcoming Richard Pryor biopic, Richard Pryor, Is It Something I Said? The report claims that Morgan is in negotiations to play Red Fox, the star of the famous TV show Sanford and Son, who gave Pryor his start in comedy. Morgan will be joining Eddie Murphy, who plays Pryor's father, Leroy Pryor, Taraji P. Henson as Pryor's mother, Gertrude L. Thomas Pryor, Oprah Winfrey will portray Pryor's grandmother, Marie Carter, Mike Epps will star as Richard Pryor, and Academy Award winner Kate Hudson will play Pryor's widow, Jennifer Pryor. David, Byer saw the idea of Tracy Morgan playing Red Fox in the Richard Pryor biopic. I buy this. Uh, it, it's been such a great ride for Tracy Morgan. I don't know if any of you guys got to see the Saturday Night Live where he you know, came back, made his comeback, you know, of course, after his, uh, his car crash. And this cast is fantastic. Everybody. Yeah. Taraji P. Henson has been doing great work for years. I'm glad she's getting more work. She's an empire right now if you want to see her. Eddie Murphy is playing the father of one of his icons. Yep. Somebody he yeah. looked up to that he, you know, built his career. You know, I mean, the guy, this guy was a, I mean, he, he, he started it. I mean, especially for, you know, African-American comedians. I mean, he's the great, he's the, the father of all of that. You yeah. know, everybody looks to him. So this is, I, I buy this whole this whole film. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. Richard Pryor. Yeah. Richard Pryor. I mean, he's yeah. one of the best comedians of all time. So I definitely buy this. I definitely buy Tracy Morgan. I'm happy that he's back doing what he does best. You know, it is funny. There was an earlier attempt to get a Richard Pryor biopic made, and Eddie Murphy was going to play uh, Richard Pryor at one point. That's just going back away. So it's kind of cool that he's got to come back yeah. now and do this. Look, I'm I'm very excited about. Like there was a there was a period of time there we didn't know that Tracy Morgan was still gonna be alive. Right. I mean, for a long time after that. Or then even after that, after it looked like, okay, he's out of the woods, if he would ever be himself again, I think it's great. Now, he's got another movie coming up. I think it's called The Fight. I think hmm. he's got coming up with um, I'm trying oh, with Ice Cube and the dude from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And he was also in uh, Pacific Rim. And I'm forgetting oh. his name off the top of my oh, head. Oh, little guy, yeah. Uh, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Uh, not Hunnam. Charlie Day. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie Day. Day. So he's got that movie coming up as well. That all being said... I sell this. I don't see Tracy Morgan pulling off Red Fox. I, I just don't see Tracy Morgan. Super thrilled. He's recovering. Super thrilled. He's making mm -hmm. a comeback. I like almost everything else about this. I like all the casting of this movie, too. Mm -hmm. I don't see Tracy Morgan being able to do a good Red Fox. Mm -hmm. I, I personally don't see it. Hopefully, when we see the movie, totally going to prove that wrong. But so for me, for now, I got to sell it. John, you're giving me I'm a heart coming. attack. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> John Campion doesn't believe in Tracy Morgan playing me. Uh, I can't see anymore. Red Fox. I love Red Fox. I've loved him ever since I saw him when I was a little kid in all Sanford and Son and mm -hmm. his own TV show series that he had. I think he's an incredible talent. And I, I, I buy Tracy Morgan being able to like personify Red Fox. I want to see him try i think he could do it so i'm buying i buy the whole cast right now i'm really excited richard pryor is a, is a legend a genius uh, and seeing him finally honored in a great biopic with this kind of raw talent mm -hmm. i'm really excited for the cast so which by the way if you have not seen and i highly recommend you do richard pryor live on the sunset oh, strip so good if you have not seen richard pryor live on the sunset strip jump on your roku or whatever find whichever service carries it and <clears throat> treat yourself and watch that. You you will be glad that you did. All right, what's next? The first official poster and trailer for the upcoming third installment of the Divergent series, Allegiant, has just hit the web. After the earth-shattering revelations of Insurgent, Allegiant's Triss, Woodley, must escape with four, James, beyond the wall that encircles Chicago to finally discover the shocking truth of what lies behind it. John Byers sell the poster and trailer for Allegiant. You'll never make it a day in the scorch. Oh, wait, is <laughs> it, wait this isn't the same movie? This, Maze Runner. Isn't, this isn't the same trailer? This isn't the next Maze Runner movie? What? <laughs> um, so, this, this is, it looks terrible. It looks absolutely terrible. It's a terrible poster. It looks exactly mm -hmm. like, the, as a trailer, remember, right now I'm just talking about the trailer. I'm not talking about the film. The trailer. It looks like a, seriously, I swear to God, it just looks like another version of the Maze Runner trailer. That's that second, the, the, yeah. you'll never make it into Scorch. Like, yeah. It's just, and, and, and that aside, forget the fact that it looks similar. Since the other one, I believe, also looked bad. This looks bad. I mean, this is, that's a terrible poster. 
That's an hmm. awful post. Come on, you could have done way better than that. So I'm looking cool, yet I'm repelling. Yeah, I mean, like, the laws of physics do not apply to how I'm going to stand. Yeah, one girl's kind of like getting low. I you know I mean? <laughs> it's just a bad looking poster. And it's like, you can almost tell. That is Miles Teller, is it not? Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. You, you were almost tell in the poster, <clears throat> I do not want to be in this movie. <laughs> you know, that's the funny thing. Poor Miles guy. Teller, a while ago, remember he made that slip. It's like, he hates being in these movies. Mm. He does not want to be in these movies, but he's there. And that kind of slipped out, to which I believe he completely regrets that he said, obviously. But when you got a guy out there and everybody knows he doesn't even want to be in this movie, don't put him on the poster. And especially don't put him on a poster. I've never seen a more disinterested looking yeah, face he looks bored. in a movie poster than I've seen. See him on his face, on Miles Teller's face right there. I, I got no choice. I got to sell this, David. What about you? I'm selling it. I mean, do you think these guys know they're in like the poor, the poor man's version of the Hunger Games? Like, they're the Hunger Games oh, has sure like were. the top spot. They have the like they're you know they're in second place. It's yeah. it, it looks bad. It's just so generic. I, I was bored by the first one. Yeah, uh, I had the uh, the sad uh, <laughs> duty to see Divergent when we were over. You uh, and in Dennis Atlanta. tried to pull yeah. me to go into that with I you. I know you were smart. We were like, "Come on, dude, the beer's free." You were like, "I'm out." <laughs> <laughs> we were like drinking. We were in Atlanta at the time. Like, I'm just yeah. going back to the hotel. It was like it, you're it, in a movie theater and they had all these beers and stuff. That's crazy. It was like just. It was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Really, Divergent was very boring. I'm, I'm Come watch Divergent with us. I'm like, good day, sir. I know. I'm out. Yeah. So. You know what? I'll give this trailer. I'm gonna sell the poster. I think it's really bad, but I will. I, I will middle middle uh, sell. I guess half buy, half sell. I don't know if I could do that. I'm in the middle, guys. On the trailer, just because I liked some of the special effects, I like those those uh, cars look like spinners. We we're talking about Blade Runner. Yeah. I liked some of the outside Scorchio. Like once they got to the, we're the new humans, and we're you're all part of this weird uh, petri dish test called Chicago. You know post-apocalyptic 2050 or whatever it's called, you know? So, I mean, they kind of show you everything in the trailer as well. It's one of those trailers where they give you, like, here's the whole story, beat right. by beat, little snippets of it. It looks at least, to me, better than Divergent, so I'm going to, like, medium half sell or whatever. I still sell the poster. I was going to do it by herself, but I'm curious, like, Miles <laughs> Teller, do you think he's just saying that because he's had bad luck? He's on Fantastic Four. Not great. He's well, this on is elite, like the yeah. fantastic yeah. Four. Four. He was yeah. cracking on so it. So he's from just diversion. he's just not into yeah. it at all. Then yeah. no, he's, he's not, not into, into it at all. Of, okay. Okay. And, and the question I have at this point is, which family member of Jeff Daniels does the producers of these movies have held hostage right now? Yeah, he's Making in all Dan of them. I mean, Jeff Daniels could. I mean, if the rules were different, Jeff Daniels could arguably be nominated for best supporting actor in two separate movies yep. this year yeah. with jobs. his performance yeah. in Jobs, which he'll probably get an Academy Award nomination. Mm -hmm. And I totally believe he totally could, could get one or could have got one if it wasn't for his performance in Job for The Martian. Mm -hmm. And then he pops up in this. It's like, which family member are they holding hostage? Yeah, Kate to Winslet his? too. I mean, in the yeah, first couple, uh, Kate Winslet. You know, uh, I mean, I think it's just called that. That truck. Good paychecks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put millions, dump them right now. <laughs> yeah. Hear that sound? You're like, uh, he's in. That's yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, so it's that time of the show now for Mailbag. Look, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, just email us at any time at collidervideo at gmail.com. Now, for those of you watching us live right now, we do the show live every day, Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can send in some live Twitter questions right now, and here's how you do it. Make sure you're following us on Twitter and tweet a question to at Collider Video. And after we're done with the mailbag question, we will take your live Twitter questions. Ashley will pick those out. But for now, let's get to the mailbag. So, Ashley, what do we got? John Rodriguez writes, hey, John, love the show and I watch it every day. You guys do an amazing job. I know you watched the Ronda Rousey fight. So my question is, do you think this loss will hurt her movie career or will it actually help it? We'll love to hear your input. Thanks and keep bringing the filthy. Yeah, wow. So we, um, as you know, we're MMA maniacs around here, at least Dennis and I are. And so we were out in Hollywood watching the fights and th just bar none. Uh, the, the thing about Ronda Rousey is no athlete has ever dominated the sport the way Ronda Rousey, ha Ronda Rousey has the last uh, couple of years at any rate. Her last four fights combined, get this, wrap your head around this, Ronda Rousey's last four fights combined lasted two minutes and 10 seconds. That's how long her fights last. I mean, that's Tyson never came close to that. Like that is just stupid kind of numbers. And so we go in and we're watching and, and she has transcended the sport as a result. The most dominant female athlete 
in the history of sports. And she has transcended to the point that she's getting movie deals. She's going to be in Roadhouse. Paramount signed a deal for her to star in her own biography and all that kind of stuff. All predicated on this larger-than-life superhuman that we've been talking about in Ronda Rousey. Despite the fact that she can't act. Uh, because she can't. And I, I'm a big... That's coming from a big Ronda Rousey fan. She can't act. But anyway. So... But you understand it because she has transcended entertainment. She's transcended sports. She's transcended everything. She's this huge icon. We're sitting, David was there, myself, uh, Dennis, a bunch of our, our, our people were there. And we start watching this fight where she's fighting Holly Holm, Muay Thai champion, boxing champion, undefeated mixed martial arts fighter. And she's great. And 45 seconds into the fight, I remember I turned to Ann and I said, Holly Holm's going to win this fight. Holly Holmes is going to win this fight. And I, even though I'm a big Ronda Rousey fan, I, I always I got a special place in my heart for underdogs. So when Holly Holmes started landing those counter punches to Ronda Rousey blindly and stupidly rushing in, I started jumping up and down out of my chair. I mean, I was just excited. And when, she, and when Holly Holmes delivered the big head kick, the highlight reel head kick knockout, I jumped out of my... We all did. I yeah, mean, we were, we I think we were all there to cheer for Ronnie, but by the end of that fight, we're all jumping up and down, <laughs> screaming and cheering, and it was something else. Now, uh, as an MMA note, the only reason Ronda Rousey lost that fight because she was an idiot. She decided to... Just forget the fact that I am a world Olympic medalist judo fighter, <laughs> best grappler in this thing. I My bread and butter is taking people to the ground and breaking their arms. She decided, no, I'm the best fighter in the world, so I'm going to beat her at her own game. Mistake. And she kept rushing in like a bull, getting cracked. Instead of stepping back, she kept chasing her. She fought like an idiot. Anyway, that all being said, for those of you who follow me on social media, you know about five seconds after that fight ended, I put out a tweet and a Facebook post that said, so much for Ronda Rousey's movie deals. Because I, and like you were asking in the question, uh, yeah, John Rodriguez writes in the questions, like, will this hurt her movie chances? Look, <clears throat> Ronda Rousey was not getting offered movie deals because she's an exceptional, aspiring, filled with promise actress. She's not. She can't outact my shoe. I mean, we've been saying that forever. But she is a mega celebrity because she has transit. She's this invincible being. And so she's the hottest thing. She's the biggest star the UFC has. And just three years ago, four years ago, they didn't even have women's MMA in the UFC. Well, there was women MMA all over the world, just not in the UFC at the time. Now she's their biggest star, their biggest draw. That invincible, transcending the sport, iconic, nay, nearly mythological being known as Ronda Rousey is now just another fighter probably still the best in the world and i fully expect that when she gets a rematch against holly holmes she will fight a different fight and i fully expect that she will beat holly holmes but that being said the imagery the iconography if you will of this unbeatable supreme being who transcends entertainment transcends movies transcends sport who is just dominant over everything she's basically howard stern king of all media she's the queen of all media now She's just another girl who took a shin to the jaw and was lying bleeding on the ground. And I cannot help but believe at, that, yes, this is going to definitely affect this. This is absolutely going to affect this. I don't think people at Paramount are now scrambling around developing, we got to get this Ronda Rousey biopic made. I don't think those conversations are happening today. I don't know that people are now putting into high gear Hey, let's fast track Roadhouse with Ronda Rousey. I don't think anybody's too excited to get that movie made over there now because we're no longer featuring this transcendent, iconic, you know, supreme being. Now it's just another fighter lying bleeding on the ground. That's her last memory. Now, all that could change if this was Ronda Rousey's first Rocky fight against Clubber Lang and she can come back in the second fight and win, win in a dominant fashion, maybe that becomes a great story and maybe that puts everything back on track. I, don't, I have no insider knowledge on this, no insider information. But as a fan, I have to suspect that all them movie deals right now are on hold. I don't think anybody's rushing to make these things with Ronda Rousey at this point. Anyway, Schnapp, you, like, shock and surprise. You actually saw the fight. But anyway... Yeah. Understanding 
you know, seeing the fight, seeing not just that she lost, but how she lost. For those of you who didn't see the fight, this wasn't like a fluke punch that dropped no. her. She was totally dominated yeah. from start to finish and left broken and, and bleeding on the ground. Yeah, I had to how go to the hospital. Fight? How mm -hmm. do you feel, do you feel or think that this affects what was in motion with her aspiring movie career at this point? Well, I'll say this, like, you know, as, as a lot of people watch the show, no, I'm not a giant sports fan, but occasionally I'll watch, you know, different games here and there. I heard Ronda Rousey lost, so I went to YouTube and watched the fight. And seeing the fight, like, obviously I knew she lost, but then when I watched, once they rang the bell, and you just watched her charging, and, and she kept getting those Muay Thai leg kicks. Oh, the leg like kicks, the leg the kicks straight just, that down was just the middle. The start. She just cracked she, her. Because Rousey was just charging her, and it was like, if you just laid back, you know, I'm just saying I'm not the you know king of this UFC fighting stuff, but I was like, I, just as a, as a, you know, oh, let me see what's happening, you know, viewer of occasional fights, I could see that she was doing something wrong. And this other gal was doing everything right. This other gal was like doing these stances, doing these moves. Uh, Rousey was dropping her guard, letting herself get kicked in the face, letting herself get kicked in the shins because she was charging. Like, if I could just get her, if I could just grapple her. And then she did grapple her. She did get her to the ground and it didn't work. And I think that's that. And then she got punched in the face. And then the round was over. And then round two decimated. She was surprised when she got that back leg kick. She was like, oh, what just happened? And then got kicked in the face. Mm -hmm. I mean, in that realm of fighting, I always knew she would eventually lose because that's what happens. You know, people win, 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 and they become in everyone else's minds invincible. But they're all just human. Every all every one of us is eventually going to lose. And in this sport, you eventually lose or you just retire. You know, one of the two. I mean, she's going to come back. Mm -hmm. She's going to fight Holmes again. Is she going to win? If she wins, will that put Roadhouse back on? Will that put her bio <laughs> back on? I'm sure it will. I mean, I think. I what do you think is happening right now before that rematch? What do you think is going on right now? I don't before think that the happens? bio is on hold. I think because of the way that she came out of nowhere and basically generated this like incredible sport. Like you know, now there is a female league for UFC, and she's kind of the the, the apex of it. You know, uh, I think that in itself is a story. Just being being undefeated for so long and having those fights. That's a story. I mean, eventually people lose in these games, you know, like you, you, the Bulls won for only so many games until they didn't win. You right. know, so you have streaks in all yeah. sports where people are like, man, they're unbeatable. The team is incredible. The team is cracking. The team loses. I mean, when it's an individual like this, she got overconfident. All of you guys who watch the show all the time, you know, you knew her fighting skill. You saw the overconfidence, and you said you called it. She's going to lose. Yeah, because you could you tell saw, 45 seconds in that fight, you could just tell. We, we were all saying at the table, mm -hmm. she's going to lose this fight so unless she changes tactics. I don't, I don't yeah. think it's going to affect her two current films. I don't think. I think they'll move forward with Roadhouse because she's still a name. And just because she got beat up in this one match doesn't mean all the people who love Ronda Rousey aren't cheering for her to get that rematch to win again. And even if she loses again, maybe she'll win on the third time. I don't think she's out for the count by any means of the, the imagination. I think it's more like you screwed up. You, you were way overconfident. Everyone knew it except for you and you paid the price. Now can you come back? And you were saying, you know, she has that skill set where if she just plays it the right way, she could win. So, I mean, that's kind of makes it makes the second the, the rematch even more exciting than this one where people were like, she's going to be done in 15 seconds. And even Holly Holmes, I read some comments where she was like, I was crying while I was training. I was so nervous about this. I was having mental breakdowns thinking about you could see fight. her shaking while she was getting like put well, the Vaseline well, on her eyes. Yeah, like, you could see her just was, shaking. Her, yeah. Even her abs yeah. were like vibrating. Yeah. Yeah. She was like she had so much adrenaline. She going. was going up. She was going up against the goddess. I mean, yeah. that's because it's built yeah. up like she's going to break my arm. I'm right. going to be out in 15 seconds. Lo and behold, what happened? So that makes this rematch really exciting. And it also, I think it keeps both of their careers kind of vibrant in this weird mm -hmm. way until the rematch happens. David, let me ask you this. Right now, the story is the mm -hmm. story. I mean, obviously, Ronda Rousey was never getting movie deals because of her acting skill. Mm -hmm. It was because of the interest in her. What weighs more heavily right now? Do you think with a loss and that image being shattered, do you think the public interest is still there enough to make these movies? Or do you think the story is still interesting enough? Is the, is the story itself more interesting to still make these movies? How do you think this is affecting the movie career right now? Right now, we're in act two. This right. is gonna be a great biopic. This is act two right now. Mm. This is what she just is her come up, she comes up against this force, she's knocked out. What does she do later? I think, John, I think you're right. Right now it's gonna be maybe delayed for a little bit. 
but I think this is a perfect writing opportunity, a perfect story for act two. People love more than anything than a success story. People love a comeback, comeback story. Stories, Everybody loves a yep. comeback story. Even I'm, I, I follow golf. Tiger Woods has been kind of going down and out for a long time now, you know, but the thing is when he's on in a tournament, it's amped. There's more attendance. The numbers are better on TV. Even now, people are interested. Even if they see him fail or succeed, greatness only comes around every now and again. Yeah. Tiger Woods is arguably one of the greatest golfers of all time outside of Jack and Arnie. Mm -hmm. And when you watch Tiger, you want to see, like, maybe he can capture that greatness again. You want to see the opportunity because we're so attracted to greatness. Michael Jordan goes away for a year, plays baseball, sucks at it. I, know, I mean, right? honestly, you get him credit. No. He did well for not, you know, being a professional yeah. baseball player, but right. he wasn't great. How did he even get in? They were like, it's Michael Jordan, just let him right. play. Right. He comes <laughs> back, new yeah. number, number four. 45, you know, I mean, but you watch that because, like, that guy's great. Yeah. Rhonda is great. People will tune in to see what she do because they want to see how she recovers. The recovery story, the comeback story, is almost better than the success story of all those wins. Mm. That's why I think she's more interesting right now. Floyd Money Mayweather can laugh and all he wants, but Rhonda is more interesting than Floyd Money Mayweather because now she's up against the wall and she has to come back from that. Floyd can laugh all he wants. I don't really care about him. All right, folks. Well, I said we would take a bunch of your Twitter questions, and it's time to do that right now. If you're watching us live, just send in your Twitter questions. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at Collider Video, and just tweet us your questions. Ashley's over there. She's been monitoring the Twitter board. So, Ashley, what have you picked out? Samuel Varg writes, what movie would you pick that was good when it first came out but hasn't aged well? For me, it's Highlander. Mm. Highland, I, I don't know, man. Highlander, for me, I can watch over and over. And over. Still in my top ten all-time favorite uh, films of all time list. So Highlander for me is is definitely one. I mean, it's it's hard to say. I mean, if you want to talk about what films don't age well as far as the visual effects don't right. age well or things like that. I mean, there's lots of films you could throw in there. I can't really think of a lot of films that I've always liked because of the story, and now I don't find the story interesting. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Can you? Not really. I mean, I think when a film doesn't age well, it's flawed from the beginning. I just think the cracks show more easily over time. I think, you know... With uh, with the way films and television were made in the you know the 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s, everything was a lot slower paced, just because of the technology and the way we we're used to making making films, making being able to the delivery system of making film was editing, and now everything's digital. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's an, a quicker way of everything sped up. So not only is just like are we like tied to our phones and digital information and we're like doing three or four things at the same time the edits are faster everything's quicker there's they try to cram more stuff in so when you watch an older film a lot of younger people feel like oh, it's slower it's more boring it's just it's just a, you have to just get into a different time mindset when you watch older films that doesn't really answer that question i can't really think of anything that right off the top of my head didn't age right i guess recently I know a lot of people would be like, blasphemy. It's like I watched Caddyshack and it, it didn't hold up <laughs> to my memories of Caddyshack. So sometimes like you'll have something that you saw when you were like younger and you're like, my God, this thing is incredible. And then you watch it. It was like, it's still good, but there's a lot of flat parts, you know? What about you? I'm probably going to get ostracized <laughs> for saying this. Um, <clears throat> I don't I don't think the Richard Donner original Superman holds up for me. I actually prefer Man of Steel. Now, uh, the more I watch it, I know it's it's kind of a hard thing to say because that's because they're such a classic. But the more I watch the Richard Donner first one, Superman, I just Christopher Reeve, I think is fantastic. I love his look. He looks when I think of Clark Kent in my head, I see I see him. But I just I, I just doesn't hold up for me for some reason. Man of Steel. I'm just talking about Superman movies. Speaks to me more. Some older films hold up fantastic. The Godfather one and two I actually rewatch every year. Um, I love, we were talking about Citizen Kane before this. I love Citizen Kane. Right. Casablanca. I can watch those movies once a year, but Superman, I've gone back to watch it, the original one. It doesn't hold up. It doesn't speak to me. Um, right, for yeah. me. I, Man of Steel does for some reason. Even I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that. It's just the way I feel about that one. Right on. All right, what's next? Kobe Bean writes, any updates on the upcoming Jason Siegel film based on the 2012 Canadian maple syrup heist? Oh my God! That I almost forgot about that. That Quebec story. Um, no. Now that you're, I'm glad you brought it up. I don't think we. I, I've heard one single lick about it since we first talked about it, like a year and a half ago, maybe yeah, two nothing. years ago when we first came up about it. That's it's it's based on a true story of an actual heist involving maple syrup in Quebec. Um, and I remember the the news dropped about it that they were looking at that, and I was really fascinated by it. But now that you mention it, no, I haven't heard one lick about it. Have you guys heard anything? Mm, no. All right. What's next? <laughs> Rama Ahmadi writes, "Hey guys, my question is: best poker movie, not name rounders." Um, I've got to look at. I got to look up the title here. Um, it's it's the one 
with uh, Werner Herzog is in it and Woody Harrelson. Um, I'll let you, while I look up the name of it, I think it's called The Grand. I, let me look it up here. Um, the Grand uh, Movie. Let me see if I've got this right. Well, this isn't necessarily poker, but I really like The Cooler with William H. Macy. Cooler? Right. Yeah. That, was like, that wasn't poker. That was just like any game. You know, he would go and cool them off, like ruin their hot streak. Yeah, so, that's right. It's a very fun movie, so... Uh, but it is called The Grand. And listen to this line. Okay. It's Woody Harrelson, David Cross, uh, Dennis Farina, Cheryl Hines, Richard Kind, uh, Chris uh, Parnell, Werner Herzog, Jason Alexander, Ray Romano, Mike Epps, Judy Greer. I mean, the, it's just an incredible thing. And it's about this. There's a whole – if you are into poker, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm huge into poker, then you'll recognize a lot of real-life poker stars are in that, like uh, Phil Hellmuth's in it and stuff like that. Um, and it's supposed to be, it takes place, it's a fictional thing about this uh, rich Las Vegas guy who owned these casinos has passed away, and he set up a tournament, a poker tournament, where it's just winner take all. No second place money, third place whatever, and it's just first place. Woody Harrelson enters it, but Werner Herzog, to me, steals it. Now, most of you will know Werner as a director, stuff like that, but he's done a little bit of acting. But he plays this guy who always talks like this. And it's kind of done from a narrative. It's a mixture. You know some movies and TV shows do it like a documentary style, like The Office or mm -hmm. Parks and Recreation. This is kind of a mix of narrative and documentary style. So every once in a while, they're sitting down and talking to Werner Herzog. And every time they interview him, you realize he's petting a different animal. Huh. He's sitting in his chair, petting a different animal. And then finally, a question comes up, and I can't remember it exactly, but it's like, how do you maintain your, your vigor? Like a, a poker session can be 12 hours long, 14 hours long, day in, day out. How do you maintain that? And he, Werner Herzog, the way only Werner Herzog could say a line, and I'm not doing it any justice. But Werner Herzog, he's sitting there, I think he's petting a rabbit at the time. He's like... It is important to stay in touch with your natural side. It is important for me every day to kill at least one living thing with my bare hands. <laughs> oh, and, he's in it. and then you realize his hotel room is like filled with all these animal cages oh, no. and some of them are empty now and you're like, ah! but anyway, <laughs> it's called it's called The Grand. It never got a theatrical release, I don't believe, but look it up. I thought it was hilarious. I had a really good time watching it. So aside from Rounders, um, that is probably what uh, game were they playing in Casino Royale? That's what I was gonna say, Casino oh. Royale. Yeah, that was poker. Playing, yeah, they're oh, yeah. playing poker. That's a great yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's like a good like forty minute scene. It's a very long scene that yeah. really plays the tension. You know, Mads mm. Nicholson's blood tear. Yeah, his, his yeah. tell. He was looking yeah, for the tell. tell yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next? Not necessarily a poker movie. What about Ocean's Eleven? Do you guys like? Yeah, that? it's a good Vegas oh, movie. I, good I Vegas love movie. as a Vegas yeah. movie. As it's a couple things because I love Vegas movies because I go to Vegas mm. a lot. I love the, yeah. the feel. That's why I like Las Vegas. But it it's a Vegas movie. It's a great heist movie. Mm. I I really like the Ocean series. Yeah. Anthony Rodriguez writes: Are you excited for Mockingjay Part Two? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I am. Look, I, I do not like the books. I read all the books and I didn't like them. Uh, I didn't hate them either, but I have really enjoyed the movies, especially the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the second Hunger Games? Catching Fire. Catching Fire. Fire. The Catching Fire was a yeah. fabulous follow. I, I really enjoyed the first one. I didn't love the first one. I really enjoyed the first one. Love the second one. I really did enjoy the third one as well, though it was a little, I, I don't know that they should have split it into two parts. Uh, because it felt a little too setup heavy, and now I'm afraid the last one might be a little bit payoff heavy instead of a nice mixture of the two, right. like the second one was. Mm -hmm. But I am a fan of the Hunger Games film franchise. Very excited about seeing this this next one right now. What about you, Schnapp? Yeah, I am too. I, I, I think the entire franchise, is it was great. It's a great vehicle for Jennifer Lawrence. All the acting has been fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely, uh, it reminded me a lot of that, uh, boy, now Battle Royale. And I, I had never seen Battle Royale, and I finally saw it like a few months ago, and I was like, wow, all right, I see where, you know, <clears throat> there's so many similarities, but I'm looking forward to the, the finale. I don't think it's mm -hmm. the finale. They're going to they're gonna make more sequels, you know. It's you a, think they'll do some prequels yeah, in the oh, future? Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, what's, what about you, David? Oh, I'm excited for this, yeah, because I, I wasn't, second one's my favorite, Catching Fire 2. I thought, like, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 1, it was just a lot, you knew they were milking it, because, you know, jump, snap, pull that truck, boop, boop, yeah. you know, to get all the cash going in, so I'm excited for that. I think this one's going to be fantastic. All right. I was bragging before we started that I got to see it last week. Oh, it was amazing. Totally. Not did you get to see it last week? I did. I got to see it last week. It was oh. super awesome. I'm so excited for everyone to see it so I can actually talk about it. Did Wendy right take you? 
No. Uh, I know some people. I know oh, some people. Well, <laughs> so, so. Okay, what's next? Marcos Vera <laughs> writes, is there any chance of Inside Out being among the Oscar nominees for Best Film? Yes. It, it will depend on... Once again, the number of nominees. If it's it, there's a there's a risk it won't be if it's a five nominee year. If it is a seven nominee year or greater, I think it's almost a lock that it'll get nominated. I, I'm going to be really disappointed if it's not. So I I believe it's a very good chance. I'm not going to say lock, but I believe it's a very good chance you're going to see Inside Out as nominated as one of the best pictures. What do you guys think the chances are? I hope I think the chances are high, and I hope it happens. Uh, is it still? Are we up nine or ten? For best picture, is it still, can it get to that? Uh, is that still the number right now? It can now? go as high as nine, nine. or ten. Nine, nine or ten, ten is yeah. possible, depending on how the voting goes. But I, I hope so. I thought it was fantastic. I, I love this. Uh, Pixar does it every time. Not every time. I can't, I'm not that big into cars, but right. with like Up, Wally, they always just seem to pull on the hard strings every single time for me. I, 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 I lost it at the end. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the minority. I didn't really like Inside Out that much. Oh my I gosh. Did not pull no my hard soul. Strings. No soul. <laughs> no soul. Or perhaps <laughs> too smart. Oh. Uh, it, it just didn't do it for me, but I, I liked it. I just didn't love it, so I don't think it deserves an Oscar. Oh. Um, there right. you go. How's that for a <laughs> On that note. What's next? Jesus Galindo writes, what are your plans for this Thanksgiving? Um, to me, Thanksgiving was in October. I'm Canadian. I don't oh, even, that's right. I don't even know what American Thanksgiving that's is. Like, right. people, so they got, everybody on the staff always so asks me, oh, so what are we doing for Thanksgiving? He's like, I don't even, when's your Thanksgiving? I have <laughs> right. no idea when it, you know, it's, it's cultural difference. I guess Thanksgiving in, in the U.S. is a really really big deal like almost on the level what i've discovered here is it's almost on the level of christmas it was some people it's a bigger holiday than christmas in canada it's it's a holiday but i mean christmas is the holiday and thanksgiving is just uh, another day kind of so it's not really that big of a deal yeah. so uh what am i doing for um thanksgiving probably watching some football that's probably going to be going to a movie and watching some football. What about you, Shane? I think we're going to go uh, do like a potluck with a bunch of friends. We've done that. Sometimes we'll go you know, tr go to different friends' houses or we'll have it at our house. So this year we're going to just probably end up going to some friend's house and have a big, you know, friend Thanksgiving freak out food fest. So. That's right. Thanksgiving changes depending on how, how, you know, as you age. When I was a kid, it was because, you know, we're celebrating the time that it was such good times between the, the colonies and the Native Americans. You get a little older, you realize it wasn't such good times, right. and then it just becomes about football and food, and <laughs> now it's a good time to watch some movies. The Apollo Creed movie's coming out that weekend, yes. so I'm excited to see Creed. Yeah, I want to go see Creed. That's what I'm going to be doing. All right, let's take two more. All right, Stephen writes, did they make Ben Affleck's Batman too old? No, no, I think it's great. If you're going to tell this story, then you need him this age. He's got to be this age. If you're talking about the, the, the grizzled, rough, you know, like veteran of a lot of crime fighting wars who's been through it and then had stepped away from it and is coming back, and that's the story you're telling, then you can't go any younger than this. This is the right age. This is the guy. And I, I think they've handled this totally perfectly. I'm excited for it, Schnepp. Yeah, I mean, this is the Dark Knight Returns, basically. Like, he's been away for a while. We'll see if that was like the young Clark Kent was imitating him with the red cape when he was a kid. Because he couldn't be <laughs> imitating himself. Um, yeah, I, I think it's perfect casting. I, I really am very excited to see what they do with this film. So. I'm excited, too. I, I think I would have loved to have seen if it was 20 years earlier, maybe 25, Clint Eastwood as uh, right. Batman. Yeah, I know 25 years ago. Yeah. Just, just the voice and the look. And I mean, I, I would have loved to see Clint Eastwood in the role. But Ben Affleck's perfect. I think I love the gray streaks in his hair. Yeah, it's going to be good. I remember about two or three years ago, before they announced Ben Affleck, before they announced that even they were doing Batman v Superman. So it was longer, probably about three years ago. I remember thinking, if you ever did a live action adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns, I actually saw Sylvester Stallone. Oh. Playing it like not talking in his heavy Stallone-ish voice, right. but when you thought about who Bruce Wayne is in The Dark Knight Returns, um, th that I always thought he could be an interesting choice for that. Twenty years ago, Clint Eastwood would have been that yes, guy. That's a, yeah. Clint Eastwood yeah. would have totally been that yeah. guy twenty years ago. <laughs> All right, last question of the day. Eric Berg six four six two sixty writes: Do you guys think Fox will ever make a second Dragon Ball movie? No. Yeah, no. I don't think anyone went and saw the first one. No one so saw the first happening. one. Totally What's Dragon bombed. Ball? Right, it's Gem in the Hollow Grand. Uh, but no, it's, no, not, it's, no, no, it's a big, no, it's a, that's it's a big a, franchise. That's, that's a, a big franchise. different yeah. question right. than will they ever, you know, throw it all out the window and try just rebooting it at some point? I, I won't fall over shock if that happens. Um, but a second one, no, absolutely yeah. off the books. A rebooted one, possible. I mean, I don't. There are a lot of, like, 
pop culture things that meant for kids that I watch and then I can get into and I think are really cool. And I'll, I'll play the unpopular one. I think Dragon Ball is stupid. I really do. I, I, that, but that's just me. That doesn't mean you should think it's stupid or anybody else should think it's stupid. I'm, I'm sure there's things that I like that you think is stupid. It, totally cool, totally fair. Uh, I've never understood the appeal of, um, of anything related to Dragon Ball. Whenever, I mean, one of my best friends up in Canada at the time was so into it and got me to watch it. And I'm just like, this, it all, it's every episode's the same. It all looks exactly <laughs> the freak. I can, some friends of mine will pop up some clips on YouTube and I watch them. It's like, this looks like the exact same clip. And then let me guess, he's going to jump in the air and a big bright light will shine behind him and he'll scream something and there'll be a big explosion. It's, it's, I don't, whatever. That's just me. I think Dragon Ball's stupid, but. I have great friends who are super smart and have great taste who do love Dragon Ball Z. I know a lot of people love Dragon Ball Z. Enough so that I do think at some point, Fox or another studio will take a crack at trying to launch a franchise for it. And I think it's got enough fans in the world that it warrants it. I mean, the, the mm -hmm. first one they tried, total failure. The, the quality was awful. Nobody wanted to go see it opening weekend before they even knew the quality was awful. Mm -hmm. But I think it's got <clears throat> enough of a fan base that at some point they will get a shot. What do you think, Shnep? Well, I had an ongoing joke with some friends that Dragon Ball's really just like two old men. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the sequel, Dragon Balls 2, and it's just two old naked men. <laughs> oh, God. That's all I got. I think you can see it. It's big. I mean, we go to Comic-Con, you still see you know, cosplay. Yeah. It, it oh, yeah. still has a name. I mean, it's. I think maybe it just needs a fresh approach, a new approach. Yeah, Reboot. I, I, yes. A totally different approach to what they did with that original. And, mm -hmm. and I think if you do, look, I'm, I'm one who always says that your job is not to stick, the movie maker's job is not to stick to the source materials to make the best movie you could. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? In the first one, they decided not to stick to the source material at all, and they made a piece of shit movie. It was just awful. Mm -hmm. How about this time? Just, I mean, just to just to try what to go different from what you tried and failed. Try sticking to the source material. I mean, I never say mm -hmm. that you have to do that, but you tried going really far away from the source material. It did not work at all. If you do make another one, try sticking a little bit more to the source material, and please that fan base that is out there that is already fans of this property right. and and i think you're going to see better results but who knows we will have to wait and see all right folks that'll do it for us for this installment of collider movie talk thank you so much for joining us listen don't forget lots of great films are playing out our friends over at amc theaters right now head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater showtime and of course your movie ticket information want to remind you that the reason my face looks this stupid at least a little bit more stupid than it normally does is because it is november which means it is no i'm participating like i have in years past uh, for no shave november just hopefully when you see my face and how like raggly it is right now uh, and yes i have actually not shaved in over two weeks even though like if david didn't shave this is what david would look like after probably three the, the, days this is like three hours i shaved three hours that's ago. three hours this is three hours so this is I'm what already, david would look like I'm in like, like two days yeah. so i have the facial hair of a five-year-old child uh, but remember it's all about raising awareness and supporting cancer research so please this month skip one arby's trip skip one chili's trip and make a donation no matter how big or small to like the american cancer society or many of the other great cancer uh, associations out there that fund cancer research i want to thank the people sitting at the table with me first of all sitting here over my left mr john schnepp schnepp where can people find you online this is just me being lazy I am probably going to shave tonight. It has nothing to do with that. Like, you know, I support cancer research too, but I'm going to shave. Um, you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp, and you can find my film, The Death of Superman Lives What Happened, by watching it on Showtime or checking it out at my website, www.tdoslwh.com, and get a digital download and support independent film. Of course, sitting over here on my right, Mr. David Griffin. David, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at GriffinDE, and whether... John Campy over here likes or not. I spend a lot of time with him this week. We got Flash uh, <laughs> recap show tomorrow night. And on Wednesday, we got uh, Star Wars Rebels along with Christian Harloff. And of course, at the end, our lovely host today, Miss Ashley Mova. Ashley, where can people find you? You know, I'm also participating in No Shave November. So find my hairy mustache or my hairy <laughs> legs on Twitter <laughs> and on Instagram. With that. At Ashley Mova. <laughs> Happy Monday, guys. <laughs> and uh, that, of course, you can follow me on the various social media networks. Just follow me on Facebook or on Twitter by following me at John Campia. That'll do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is John Campia. Until next time, bye bye. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.